This was the scene in the early hours of November 7th. A triumphant Barack Obama celebrating an historic re-election. At the start of 2012, though, this scene looked anything but certain. A sluggish economy, a contentious health care plan, an army of donors willing to part with hundreds of millions of dollars, and an energized Republican base, all presented a huge impediment to a second term. Corporations are people, my friend. I was pumping a little iron to get myself psyched for coming out here. You Becky, 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 stand, stand. Oops. I'd say you're fired. They're going to put you all back in chains. Governor Romney doesn't have a five-point plan. He has a one-point plan. In January 2012, Barack Obama was facing an historically unprecedented challenge to get reelected. An unemployment rate of 8.3 percent and almost 13 million Americans out of work. No president since Franklin Roosevelt had ever been reelected with the jobless rate over 7.5 percent. At the start of the year, though, even the economy took a back seat to an enthralling Republican primary battle. The primary showcased a largely divided Republican Party as a range of candidates claimed early wins. Rick Santorum in Iowa, but only after a recount. Game on. Mitt Romney in New Hampshire and Newt Gingrich in South Carolina. USA! USA! Mitt Romney seemed to take back the initiative with a win in Florida after a combative debate in Jacksonville. I spent 25 years in business. If I had a business executive come to me and say they wanted to spend a few hundred billion dollars to put a colony on the moon, I'd say you're fired. Backed by evangelicals and the party's conservative base, Rick Santorum in his now signature sweater vest took the next three states and appeared capable of grabbing the nomination. But Romney's huge fundraising advantage proved too much for Santorum to overcome. After an onslaught of advertising, We fired him as senator. Why promote him to president? I'm Mitt Romney, and I approve this message. Romney took seven out of ten states on Super Tuesday, decisively won Illinois, and then peeled off eight consecutive states in April. When Gingrich in May and Santorum in April suspended their campaigns, the nomination that had eluded Mitt Romney in 2008 was now his. The same month unemployment was at 8.2 percent, almost what it was in January, and with voters consistently saying the economy was the number one issue, there were troubling signs for the Obama campaign. In June, though, and at this very spot, the White House got a boost. The Supreme Court has upheld the individual mandate and the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare, in a 5-4 ruling penned by Chief Justice John Roberts. The ruling was a victory for Obama on the domestic front. Health care for all! Health care for all! But it was only minutes old before it entered the fray as an election issue. We've got to turn 2012, uh, November 2012 into a mandate election to overturn this bill. We're going to make the November election a referendum on this. We have to say as a country on November 6th that we want affordable health care, we want to get back to work, and we want to get our economy going again. Romney's first months as the Republican challenger began badly. Polls showed him lagging President Obama, and in July, his trip to Europe was plagued with missteps. He criticized London's Olympic preparations, divulged a secret meeting with the UK's intelligence agencies, and while visiting Israel, suggested Palestinians had an inferior culture. When Romney returned in August, he unveiled Wisconsin Congressman Paul Ryan as his running mate. That man... That man is standing right next to me. His name is Mitt Romney, and he will be the next president of the United States of America. Ryan was popular with the GOP's conservative base, but he faced attacks over his budget plan, including a proposal to turn Medicare into a voucher system. Those attacks, though, seemed like small change when this happened. There are 47% of the people who will vote for the president no matter what. All right, there are 47% who are with him, who are depend upon government, who believe that, that they are victims, who believe that government has a responsibility to care for them, who believe that they are entitled to health care, to food, to housing, to you name it. A leaked video from a fundraiser in Florida showed Romney describing half the country as lazy and unwilling to take responsibility. 
The leak was bad enough for the candidate to call a snap press conference. It's not elegantly stated, let me put it that way. I'm speaking off the cuff in response to a, a question, and I'm sure I could state it more clearly and in a more effective way. But the video only reinforced perceptions that Romney, the private equity multimillionaire and son of a former governor, was out of touch. It also gave Democratic ad makers a gift that kept giving. I'm Barack Obama, and I approve this message. There are 47% of the people who will vote for the president no matter what. Mitt Romney calls half the American people. The government who believe that, that they are victims. Mitt Romney attacked 47% of Americans who pay no income tax. Now lagging badly in the polls and following a convention that delivered him no bump, Romney's chance at redemption came down to the debates. In the first debate in Denver in early October, Romney clearly got the upper hand. You've been president four years. You said you cut the deficit in half. It's now four years later. We still have trillion dollar deficits. The CBO says we'll have a trillion dollar deficit each of the next four years. If you're reelected, we'll get to a tri trillion dollar debt. The president appeared lethargic, even bored. The polls soon after showed Romney gaining and the president's support slipping. Romney was now within a few points of the president, or, according to some pollsters, even in front of him. But Obama got a boost a few days later when the monthly jobless numbers came out, showing the unemployment rate had dropped to 7.8 percent, enabling him to strike a cheerier tone on the economy. With that good news, Obama came back much stronger in the second and third debates, grilling Romney on the details of his tax plan and his foreign policy judgment. Governor Romney then also wants to spend $2 trillion on additional military programs, even though the military is not asking for them. That's $7 trillion. He also wants to continue the Bush tax cuts for the wealthiest Americans. That's another trillion dollars. In defending his handling of the attack on an American consulate in Benghazi, which killed American Ambassador Chris Stevens, he provided perhaps the most memorable moment of the debates. You said in the Rose Garden, the day after the attack, it was an act of terror. It was not a spontaneous demonstration. Is that what you're saying? Please proceed, Governor. I, I, I want to make sure we get that for the record, because it took the president 14 days before he called the attack in Benghazi an act of terror. Get the transcript. It, 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 he did, in, in fact, sir. So let me, let me call it an act of Can terror. Can you say that a little Garden louder, Candy? The, <laughs> the last twist in the campaign came a week before Election Day. Hurricane Sandy makes itself felt in New York City even before the worst of the storm arrives. The storm caused havoc in a dozen states, especially New Jersey and New York. In all, the death toll rose to more than 100. It also caused disruptions to early voting and forced a temporary ceasefire in the campaign. The president was praised for his response to the storm by New Jersey's Republican governor, Chris Christie. I spoke to the president three times yesterday. Uh, he called me for the last time at midnight last night asking what he could do. I said if he could expedite designating New Jersey as a major disaster uh, area, that that would help us to get federal money and resources in here as quickly as possible uh, to help clean up the damage here. Um, it, it, the president was great last night. He said he would get it done. The president entered Election Day with a slight lead in most national polls and small but consistent leads in almost all the swing states that would decide who emerged the victor. If Mitt Romney doesn't win Virginia, it's very hard for, to see how he makes the Electoral College math work. The AP has now declared Pennsylvania uh, for Obama. You're yeah. still hoping, but you got to admit the winds are not blowing your way well, I, have, I admit that. I'm a realist. AP and the networks have declared Barack Obama the winner in the state of Ohio. We're cautiously optimistic that, uh, that things are looking pretty good. President Barack Obama has been re-elected to his second term. An election that had broken all kinds of records for campaign spending had delivered a status quo a Republican-controlled House, a Democratic-controlled Senate, and Barack Obama as president. We are greater than the sum of our individual ambitions, and we remain more than a collection of red states and blue states. We are, and forever will be, the United States of America. But there was little time for the newly re-elected president to savor the result. CIA Chief David Petraeus resigned just 48 hours later because of an extramarital affair. Investigations were continuing into the tragedy in Benghazi, and congressional leaders were tussling over how to avoid a fiscal cliff of spending cuts and tax hikes due to take effect in the new year. In 2013, the challenges will go on. At home, the economic recovery continues, but not fast enough for the 12 million still looking for work. 
A broad 2013 will be the penultimate year for combat troops in Afghanistan. A nuclear capable Iran also looms large. Thanks for watching the Wall Street Journal's Politics Year in Review. This is Neil King in Washington.